Hi guys. Welcome to an afternoon with Captain Keith. My name is Chris Arretanero with the Coastal Conservation Association of California. We have Mr. Keith Dennett. How are you, Keith? I'm doing good. How are you guys doing? You know, not too bad. Another day in paradise here in California. I hear you're uh, coming to us from Texas, right? Yeah, we're out here in Liberty Hill, Texas. A little hot today. Actually, the last whole week's been hot, but it's definitely uh, not, not unbearable. It's decent enough. Excellent. Excellent, man. Well, I got to start out and ask you, what, uh, what have you been up to during this whole coronavirus pandemic and this quarantine? What, uh, what have you been up to? You know, we kind of took that whole shutdown a little, you know, to our advantage. We spent a lot of time working on our boats. You know, I, you know, I own the, the Constitution and the Poseidon. And, uh, you know, we, did, we took a lot of that time really doing some nice upgrades of the boats, getting them dialed in. Um, you know, the whole crew was anxious for a little break since we came out of that part of Bayern season. And, uh, you know, we kind of jumped in there and did a lot of really nice upgrades of the boats. And uh, for the most part, we were kind of ready. We all took off went on vacation. Then we got this big, hello, time to go back to work. And we're pretty excited about that because, you know, the fish are out there and big, big numbers and they're biting, you know, it's, it was pretty cool. That's what we've been up to. Excellent, excellent, man. Well, as uh, people are kind of logging on, we've got some people checking in and uh, Andrew actually wants to uh, get right into it. So uh, first question is, got any tips for the fishing the big bluefin? You know what, uh, that big bluefin has been, there's two ways of catching it. You know, actually there's a lot more ways of catching it, but uh, you know, some guys have been running around, driving around, skipping that yummy flyer, but you know, I've always been a big fan of that, you know, just sitting still, you know, getting a good kite out, um, you know, kite with a helium balloon, getting that thing out there, uh, running, running, uh, flying fish, frozen flyers or live flyers. If you can get live flyers, scoop them up. Um, it's definitely been helping, you know, when, you know, there's moments where, you know, little tips on, on keeping flyers alive in the bait tank. That's always been that kind of thing. Like you guys go out there and have a great night of scooping flyers and they're, by the morning they wake up and there's three cores of them are dead on the bottom and and uh you know we've we've kind of gone on different ways of of keeping them alive and it's helped out for us i don't know if it'll work out for you but um they have these really super lightweight um rubber bands and we'll slide them over the flying fish's wings and that just takes up you know this eliminates all that space that they take up with those wings and so it allows them to swim around um that live flyer is pretty deadly man when it's when it's on a on a on a kite um you know rig when we use a, a makaira 50 wide uh, we were using 50s and 80s and we found out that the 50 wide is the ultimate load up with 130 braid uh two to 300 pound leader and like a mustad 7691 hook has been been the game so definitely flying fish flying fish working on the, on the kites and we run two re release clips so we'll run on the Poseidon and on the Constitution, we'll run a kite right dead center of the boat, um, get it along. So if we try to get them out as far as we can away from the boat, and that's, that's been the key, get it as far away from the boat as you can. By doing that, um, when you do set yourself up and you start, and you get two baits out, you'll spread them out maybe 30, 30 yards apart. And once you get them out there spaced out, um, having that school downhill of you um, allows you, and the further your kite is away, allows you that much more time that when you do get a bite and you get a knockdown, typically when you get one bite, you get a second bite. And when you get that second bite, um, and on top of that, we run a balloon off the, off the stern, a helium balloon, a 36 incher with another flyer and another balloon off the bow with another flyer. So, you know, in essence, we're using four flying fish at a time. And so when that school comes through, you're in it and you have that much opportunity. But also too, you know, when a seal comes through, he's picking off flying fish and they, they, they go away that much quicker too. So it's kind of a, kind of a catch 22 when you're fishing all that gear in the water, you know, it can, when it gets going good, it's, it's pretty, you know, it gets pretty wild, but then also too, you know, be, be prepared to lose some flyers and go through some bait pretty darn quick. So with, with what you just said, I got to ask you, what's, what's your record on the boat? How many flyers do you fly at once? We, we fly four. Four. Four okay. flyers at once. And, and that gets kind of busy. And a lot of times, what, it starts off like that. And it sounds great. But then you start losing. You know, it's, it's like the moment you start hooking fish, especially when they're the big ones. And you hand them to, 
you know, let's, let's face it. I 90, 99% of the guys that come fishing with us, it, it's, it's kind of like the first time, the big deal. And you, you know, you handle a 250 pound bluefin and say, Hey, go have at it. If you don't pay attention to them and they just take off, you know, there's always something bad that goes on and, and we literally got to be with that fish. So as we start hooking fish, you know, we start going from four, four flyers to three flyers to just a kite with two flyers and then maybe just one flyer. And then, then we're running around, racing around, trying to like defrost flyers, you know, you're pulling out packages and dumping in the bait tank and, you know, rigging and getting things out. And it gets, it gets pretty crazy. And then we have all of our crew members down there. And then, then it gets to a point where it's passengers holding rods and, you know, they're wondering how fast they need to wind and it just, yeah. And then somebody has got to fill a helium balloon and keep that going. And yeah, yeah. And, and you know, and all of a sudden somebody drops a fly, a flat fall on top of a fish and they think they've hooked that fish and then they, you know, just, yeah, it's, it's, it's all good. <laughs> nice, man. Nice. Well, let's step back a little bit. Let's go back to the basics here. What, uh, what can you tell me about, uh, let's start with the constitution. What, what does that boat have, uh, have to offer you? Uh, you know, the constitution is pretty unique boat of its own. It's a, it's a 75, you know, overall it's an 80 foot boat. It's a, it's a fiberglass boat. So there's very few fiberglass boats left in the fleet. You know, we got Fortune and Pegasus, uh, Success is fiberglass, we're fiberglass. You know, a lot of them, you know, are, you know, A, steel, aluminum, or, you know, fiberglass over plywood. And uh, so we're, we're a fiberglass boat. This boat is, uh, you know, 80 foot. We hold uh, 25 bunks uh, on board, uh, air conditioned, super nice you know, big bunks on board, plenty of room to store your stuff on top of that. We have a, a galley that seats 14 people at a time, uh, you know, TVs and, you know, we have uh, speakers all around the boat for music always jamming out. We have, you know, we usually have a serious satellite radio, you know, playing along. Um, the cool thing is, is that our boats, we have uh, two super good chefs, uh, gourmet chefs. These guys um, are from Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. They are here. Uh, they've been with me for over five years, and they've uh, they're they're incredible chefs. Uh, they went to culinary school in Spain. Um, they got their degrees in culinary, and now they're they're on board with us. And you know, not to say that we make that fancy foo foo food on every trip, but you know, those uh, burgers that we make or wagyu burgers are super good. We have super high quality, you know, meats and produce and. You know, everything we do on board is we try to keep our standards on the on the super high end. Very cool. Very cool. And then let's uh, let's talk about your other boat, the uh, Poseidon. I know your uh, your son Hunter, Captain Hunter, is running that one out of H and M, right? Yeah, yeah. So Captain Hunter, he's uh, he's been on boats since he was like literally spent like two hundred days a year since he was ten years old, nine years old with me. We used to have a six pack boat back in the days when I used to run around and do smaller boat stuff, but. Uh, Anyway, he, you know, he literally you know, went right out of high school, um, went straight to captain school, stepped on a boat and started running the Poseidon. I literally, I, we bought the boat. We were, I was busy running the Constitution and he literally just stepped on the boat, figured out in 10 minutes how to drive the boat and park it. And find you at the time, he just barely turned 19 and uh, Coast Guard is like, you got to prove that you know how to drive this boat, son. So they went down there and you know, sat back, but yeah, he could drive this thing. He's good. <laughs> so he's been driving these big boats his whole life. I think, I think it's, I think he was driving uh, our other boat when he was 15 years old. So he was running around, you know, driving boats when he was a young age. And actually he can drive that boat better than I am. But anyway, Poseidon is a 75 foot Knight and Carver boat that was built custom in San Diego. Um, it's got berthing for 20, 28 guys. And the cool thing is that galley has some really nice galley seating. It, uh, it seat sits, I think 23 or 25 guys, uh, super clean boats got holds tons of bait. We offer, you know, basically the same deal up to five day trips, but primarily, you know, two and a half and three and a half from day and a half to three and a half day trips is kind of the, the game, just like the, the constitution. Very cool. Very cool. We have a couple more questions that came in. Uh, one from Dave, I will see you next weekend. Will you have flyers on Gary's trip next weekend? Well, Dave, um, what's happening? That's uh, awesome. Thanks for coming out and supporting us as fishermen. Uh, yes, the boat, I, I, you know, we, uh, 
I, well, let's see. You know, we just ordered a hundred G Fly flyers that got delivered to us uh, about five days ago, and uh, um, we I, each boat had fifty. And our passengers have been showing up, bringing flyers like crazy because you know we can burn through twenty five to thirty a trip, and it just goes fast. And with you know, and sometimes it's hard to get these things too. It's really, really, really difficult to get them. We try to scoot bait whenever we can but um definitely uh yes almost 99 percent 99.9 percent yes we're going to have flyers on the boat but if you can get your hands on some it doesn't hurt to bring it throw them in the freezer and you know if, if we you know we can use ours great if if not it doesn't hurt anything take them home with you and bring them back on the next trip Nice, nice. It's interesting. You kind of touched on it earlier, but it, how how this big bluefin fishing has been evolving. Where you know, one year it's the yummy, it's all about the yummy flyer. Then the next year it's all about the uh, the dead flyer, the frozen flyer. Now it seems like it's all about the live flyer. If you can get it, and that that's pretty much the ticket to get bit. On some some days, and you know, we have like this uh, this uh, you know we'll, we'll have trips where we put a couple flyers out, get no bites, we wind them in leave them rigged up, put it back in the freezer with the leader, pull them out the next trip, put them out. The opportunity just doesn't happen that particular next trip. And sometimes these things are just like bent up, half a broken wing, yellow, just wake up in the morning, frozen, put them on the clip, send them out, and they, they, they work. It just some days they eat everything. And some days it's just they're just so finicky with every little detail that uh, even the little ribbon that we put up the line, our little marker, you know, they just, they see that. They're just kind of like weary. I don't want to touch this rig right now. And there's a lot of days where like, we can't figure out what the heck's going on. Why aren't we getting a bite today? And so we wind it in, we tear the little marker with ribbons off. We, you know, some, we do all sorts of things to it to, to, to try to get a bite, you know? And that's just, that's what, how it goes. And some days they're, they're biting real good. And some days they don't. Some days it's straight small ones, you know, 20 to 60 pounders. And some days it's just straight two to 300 pound fish. Yeah, there's always that phrase, bluefin will be bluefin, and it's absolutely true. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so we actually have another question from the San Diego Anglers. Uh, what's your thoughts on short kite rods as opposed to uh, flying the kite on a conventional rod? Say that one more, short kite rods. Right, so they have the, uh, the uh, short kite rods, the ones that are super, super tiny, and uh -huh. then how is that compared to flying the kite on a uh, conventional run? Is there oh, any difference? Oh, okay. There's, there's no difference, but I'll tell you something. You know, we fish the dial electric reels on both of our boats. So we have the electric reel, that's key. Having electric reels, uh, we do use the short ones and we've used the longer rods. The, the longer rods, they help in situations where you've got limited wind and you need to get that kite up in the air so you don't get that station wagon effect. So key is trying to get that, if you're, if you're not flying a helium balloon on your kite and you're just trying to get that thing to float up, maybe you might be using a Boston Big Game or something like that, that longer rod will definitely get, get you up and out away from the boat so you can get some altitude quick without crashing back into the water, you know? And so, but you know, we, we're a big fan. We burn through helium, you know, and we, we, you know, we're fortunate we can carry some big, you know, helium tanks on board. And I'm, I've always been a fan of, even if there's a breeze in the morning, we're always putting a helium balloon on everything. Um, I've taught my crew that it's, uh, there's so many times where like, you know, you put the helium balloon out, you got a breeze in the morning and the guys are looking at me like, why are you put a helium balloon? Cause you can, A, you get the balloon out or the kite out with a short rod. And B, when that wind dies off at 10 o'clock in the morning and starts going to glass and you're in the middle of a bite, and you've got that kite out there and you know that you're having an opportunity and your kite starts going down because the wind's going away. Kind of a bummer. So, uh, but to answer your question, you can go either one, but we are short rods, kite rods. We use the Akuma short rod with the, uh, with the uh, we use a Daiwa electric reel um, on it. We have like 80 pound braid. We have two clips on there and uh, we send it out that way. Nice, nice. It's almost like you're setting it and forgetting it with that helium. It just, you don't even have to really think about it. Totally. And a lot of times you put the rotting gear and clicker on three quarter drag. And especially when things are hot and heavy, we'll push, put the rod in a, in a rod holder down on deck. And uh, there's been many times where we turn our backs on it and pull and drag and it's hooked itself. And 
you, know, you got a fish on there. So it's kind of, <laughs> you don't have anybody to watch the rod. Everybody's bent. But uh, yeah, definitely. Awesome. Well, let's kind of dive right back into gear here. What, uh, you know, as of right now, what you've been seeing off the coast of San Diego, that, that big bluefin, that mix of yellowfin as well. If you're going out on a two and a half day trip on the on the Poseidon or the uh, Constitution, what are you going to bring? What kind of setups are you, are you thinking about bringing? Well, you know, and exactly. And, 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 you, and you say that, on a, what do I bring on a two and a half day or what do I bring on a three quarter day or full day trip? It's pretty much the same gear. I mean, it is literally the same gear right now. It's literally bringing the kitchen sink with you. Um, it's bringing a 30, a rod that can accommodate 25 to, to 30 pound, uh, 25 to 40, uh, another rod that's going to be like 50 or 60 pound. And then, you know, uh, you know, an 80 or hundred, 130 pound rod for fishing the jig, or, you know, like that. So basically if you're 30 and 40, you're, you're 25 to 40 pound. Now, sometimes, you know, when it's biting everything, they're eating the, you know, the pan off the bottom of the boat, you know, you can get away with 40 or 50 pound and big hooks and heavy line and they're eating it right in the corner. But then there's days where, you know, it's very touchy. It's picking the best sardine out of the tank, having a reel that's got a, that's smooth. Uh, it's got a small, small uh, spool diameter that enables you to, to really uh, fly line a bait and get a bait out away from the boat quickly. And that gets a bite. So 25 to 40 pound rod, 50 or 60 pound rod and an 80 pound rod, 80 to 130. That's, that's basically what you, what you need nowadays. And it's been kind of the norm for the last couple of seasons. You're absolutely right, Keith, where, you know, instead of bringing those three or four rods, you're having to bring like eight or nine rods just because you just don't know what, on what, what day, what's going to work. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, totally. Now, and that's, and that's the crazy thing is that we've got like, long range quality fish right in our backyard. You can go on a full day trip or overnight, day and a half, day and three, you know, this new day and three quarter thing has been been pretty cool for us. I mean, that's probably, that's been that our big jam on the, you know, Poseidon primarily and then on the constitution. Um, when we're, we have space available, we try to sneak that day and three quarter and just kind of allows you to, to get out, you know, load board the boat at 11 o'clock in the morning um go out head to the bait barge load up and, and you can sit there and you know have decent lighting where you can see the bait see what you're getting get good bait you know typically you have plenty of time you're not you know rushed to get any bait and you know you can go out get your bait head out the fish been so close that the guys that are good rod and reelers are getting two-day licenses two-day permits on a day and three quarter and you have an opportunity to go home with two-day limits of bluefin now it's not not too bad Nice, that works. That and you works. get and you get your first nights of, of, of night fishing jigs, and you get two nights. You get two nights of fishing fishing that jig, which is, you know, two two evening bites and two night bites. Very cool. Very cool. Well, speaking of gear, do you actually have uh, gear? You kind of hit that long range style of fishing. Do you actually have some gear for people to use on the Constitution? We do on both boats. We do. We have. We offer the landings, obviously, on our, on our local San Diego trips. They have their, their rental gear. Um, and uh, we do have our PC, Akuma PCH rods on board. They're the custom PCHs with the Tesoro reels. They have, uh, they're, you know, backed up with braid. And then, you know, we'll put a little uh, fluorocarbon on them for them. So, and then they're 40 bucks, the same price, I guess. Or I think landing charges up the same or, or that. But uh, equally, just as good. Um, sometimes a guy will come on the boat and, you know, happens all the time where you rent a rod and they're like, shoot, you know, I, I could use a 25 pound outfit. I can also use a 30 or 40 pound outfit. So we have that available. And on top of that, we do rent the heavier rods. Um, so when you do get on the boat, you know, you, instead of renting a, a heavier rod and you're unsure, are, is a captain going to fish big fish this trip? Should I go spend a hundred or $125 to rent a rod instead of going to show up to the boat and all of a sudden, you know, we're fishing 20 to 60 pounders and he's going, God, I could have saved myself that money if I would have known. And for us being in that situation, you can get on the boat and, and if the captain decides to do it, you can just rent it on the boat, you know, and you know that you're going to, you know, be able to use it, which is kind of nice. That's excellent. That's excellent. Guys, as a reminder, for those of you who are watching us, if you have any questions at all for Captain Heath, just leave them in the comments below and uh, we'll certainly get to them. Now, uh, Captain Keith, I let, let's kind of move 
south of the border here, um, down to Puerto Vallarta. I know the Constitu Constitution usually goes down there. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about those kinds of trips and uh, when we could actually uh, get on those trips? Yeah, you know, I've kind of took a step back with all this COVID going on. And, you know, we have our regulars that have all their dates kind of set in place. And uh, being in Puerto Vallarta for, you know, 200 days a year for over 15 years, um, you know, we lived at those Tres Marias, that the banks that, are, that surround all that stuff, lived and breathed and watched and stared at every little bit of current that moves around and watercolor and everything that, that happens there. And, um, you know, I've got a pretty good grasp of it. And a lot of our groups have, have you know, been running with us for over, over 10 years down there. And a lot of them come up to me and said, hey, you know, what else can we do? Can we go inshore? Can we go do this? Or could we do that? And so this year we, you know, not to take away from PV, and we'll talk about that here in a second, but we, we came back and kind of listened to our, our, our anglers and said, well, let's, let's bring in a, a, new, a new game. And so we offered um, trips to go to Mag Bay. And Mag Bay was kind of our, our deal. So our plan is to leave from San Diego around the end of the third week of, on, on the 18th of October, and we'll be going to Mag Bay first. So we'll start off our season in Mag Bay, um, October 22nd, and we're going to run seven trips on the Constitution and seven trips on the Poseidon. So um, there's, they're gonna, we're going to be offering four and five day trips, super all inclusive, including all your, your, your meals, your, uh, your, your tackle rods. We're going to have, you know, uh, a whole quiver of rods on each boat for you to use. You literally don't have to bring anything with you. It'll include your, your drinks and your, y'all, your beer, all you can drink beer. I mean, that's crazy, but we're going to have all the beer and, 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 and all the gear. It's, uh, the only thing you need to do is figure out what you're going to do about your airline ticket. And as of late, uh, basically the way it's set up, is you fly into Loretto, and uh, from there we'll have uh, two luxury vans, to, and they'll be only, we'll only be taking 12 anglers on each trip. So it'll be a super ultra light load, and we'll put six anglers per van, uh, coolers full of beers, and uh, your your stuff, and basically head down to the boat. It's a two-hour drive down to San Carlos. There we'll pick you up, load you on the boat, uh, figure out what we're going to do for the night. Uh, where we're going to go, we need to go top off some, some mackerel or, you know, maybe follow out a, a saner and, and have them wrap us some sardine or whatever they want to do. But we're going to go out, do that, and then uh, we'll, we'll offer four and five day trips. On a four day trip, you get uh, three days of fishing, and on a five day trip, you get four days of fishing. And uh, so we'll be really offering a lot of that, pushing a lot of that on our Facebook page on, on the Constitution Sport Fishing and the Poseidon Sport Fishing page starting on Monday. So you'll start seeing a lot more of that on Monday. Um, you know, a lot of talk going about that. There's very limited space available. We are offering charters. And we're offering open party trips. So, you know, depending on what size group you need or whatever spots, but we're only limited to 12. So tons of space, tons of room. Um, you know, especially on the Poseidon, it's a stateroom boat. It's a really nice boat with staterooms. Um, so it gives, it gives a lot of space for guys who are looking for that, especially now, you know. Um, and uh, so we'll be running trips from October 22nd through November 22nd. And then from there, um, we're gonna be uh, um, heading to Puerto Vallarta. And on December 1st, we will be there running all through December up till Christmas, take a little bit of a break like we do every year, and then get right after it on January 2nd. And we'll run trips all the way up until you know, until we can't go fishing anymore. Until it's time to come back home and take a little break. Wow, that's unreal. So you're saying you get the you get on the Constitution ultra limit ultra limited load, twelve guys that you normally uh, you normally take about twenty five, right? That's a that's, that's right. a whole lot of room. That's a ton of room. It's crazy, you know. Especially when you're, you know, you're, you've got twelve guys. You got two guys chilling out in the in the gal in the AC. Uh, drinking beers outside you've got you know you know five or six guys fishing the rail and then you have you know two or three guys fishing the kite and that's it I mean there's like you got the whole boat to yourself you know maybe a couple guys laying down I and mean, it's like you turn around look around the boat and like and it's funny because we get a lot of comments from other boats are like dude is it a crew trip you're running? I'm like, no, we're all here. You know, it's, I got my 12 guys. He's like, shoot, I, I don't even see anybody there. And it's like, and that's how, that's how it really does feel. You know, it's just, 
Yeah, not to mention you're going to be in Mag Bay during prime time season two. I mean, that's that's just going to be killer. It's a dream for all of us. I mean, I, we, we sit there for the last over 15 years. I mean, I've got, yeah, 16, 17 years into it. But going down, you know, obviously going to, I mean, probably 20, 20 I got 25 years going down, you know, the Cabo and running yachts and doing stuff like that. But, but every time we go through, it's like, why are we? leaving here i mean it was like we go in and catch a bunch of wahoo and yellowtail and tuna and hook and release you know catch and release a bunch of you know striped marlin and dorado and guys want to go fish the grouper and you know there's just so much to do and there's so much life and it's just it is probably the most epic fishing experience in the world for 30 days that you can get on and the great thing is is that that um you know that cycle that that big yellowfin that has been fish that that has been on that ridge for years past started last year so i think we're going to have five or six years of that big fish on the ridge you know in in late october november and all the way through november december even january you're going to start seeing that big fish and a big presence of that you know, in the upcoming years wow uh, that's unreal so let's talk a little bit more about pv and um you, you do offer those fly down, fly back trips down there. What uh, what can you typically expect on those kinds of trips? Pretty awesome. So out of LAX, it's a, a two and a half hour flight out of San Diego. It's a two hour flight. And you, you land, you get in a taxi. It's 15 minutes to come down the boat. We're over at Paradise Village and you can check out paradisevillage.com. And it's literally a five star marina. I would call it a four star hotel resort it's a five-star resort overall it's got a shopping mall right behind the boat where we have restaurants and you know the the uh uh the liquor store behind us and uh and i'm not just talking like you know a dusty area this is like being in la jolla it is beautiful this everything the hotels that surround it you're in a jungle of palm trees super clean super safe and we have everything. We have anything and everything. If you want to go down to the pharmacy, like, hey, I want to grab some, you know, whatever for the trip, or you know, I want to go down to the market and grab something for special that you wanted, or just go for a stroll. A lot of our guys will come down, step off the plane, get in their cab. Uh, we have a yacht club right behind the boat with our own pool that you're able to go use. So a lot of guys will go, A, head, put their stuff on the boat, grab their bunk. Um, and usually flights all land between three and four o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, boat doesn't leave till seven. Uh, and they'll go up to the yacht club. The guys I already know, they've been there on trips already. They got, you know, a dozen trips already on their belt. They'll go to the yacht club. They'll jump in the pool. They know that usually, if, you know, the, 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 the bar up top comes down there, sees you down there, serves you mar mango margaritas or whatever you want. And, and then, or the other option is they head over to the hotel, which the nice thing is once you're part of the, the constitution, um, you've got a full access to the full hotel. So you can go over to the, um, to the Palapa bar at the, you know, the, the big giant swimming pools. They have like four big swimming pools there. There's the beach there and, you know, get in there on happy hour, catch it. And uh, usually uh, everybody's kind of racing down the boat right about 6.45. And, you know, we're kind of like, oh God, we're going to get everybody off the dock here, but basically get everybody on board and we take off. Um, we serve you dinner at night. Um, you know, we do three and a half day trips. And so it's a, over a course of five calendar days. So if you flew in on a Wednesday, uh, you leave Wednesday night, uh, you're fishing Thursday from sun up to sundown through the night, you know, making squid, we're feeding you snacks, we're doing all kinds of sashimi and ceviche plates and, and uh, killer food. I mean, the food that we offer on all of our trips, but we can get away with, because we have the time in Puerto Vallarta, the food is a five-star restaurant on board, five stars. Uh, Mexican food, um, American food, and you know all different little bit of types, but primarily Mexican cuisine on board, and it's just it's over, over, over the top, and uh, yeah, you know we, you get three, you know, on a three and a half day trip, you get three days of fishing, and the cool thing is it's a it's an uphill ride out to where we need to go, and regardless of the weather, it's always a downhill ride home, so the weather could be whatever it is, and it's calm as could be, the angle is amazing. And you get back to the dock, you're at dock, it's, you know, six o'clock in the morning, you have tons of time. A lot of guys will just leave their bags on the boat or they'll just go to, we have a full access to the hotel. So you can go, go to the bell check 
throw all your stuff at the bell check. We've got gems that you can use. There's a spa there. The spa to go use the spa for the day is three dollars. Um, you know, if you guys, there are very few are out there going to go lift weights, but but there's a jacuzzis and cool dips and all sorts of stuff there. Um, and or you got full access to you know the big buffet, which is an all you can eat buffet, and it's ten dollars all you can eat. So the guys will usually hit that, go to the tiki bar, and uh, usually a couple hours before their flight, we have uh, freezers at the yacht club where all their fish is kept and we, we process the fish on board, we vacuum seal it. It's just, it's a, it's a five-star experience. And with everything going on, it is truly a trip of a lifetime. It's a bucket list trip. If, if you've never done it in your life, it is regardless, it is probably, it's once you go once you're hooked and you'll want to go again and again and again. And again. It's a big value. It's a great deal. I am uh, going to be booking my ticket right about now. Today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We sell fun, even though we're pretty hardcore. It's like when it's go time, it's like, yeah, it's pretty hard to get me steered off any other track than trying to catch a fish and I get pretty darn serious. And, but then once the fish are on the deck and everything's good, it's high fives, it's good times and it's a whole lot of fun. So yeah. And Wow, that sounds amazing. And we haven't even talked about the incredible fishing too. What uh, what kind of, I know you kind of go after those Cal Yellowfin, right? Yeah, we do. We specialize in that big fish. And, uh, you know, we have we kind of built a, a clientele of, of big, you know, guys that love to target that big fish. And the clientele, I mean, it's crazy. And these guys will come on the boat and they're pretty hardcore and they want to get that big fish and we'll get them a say 180 pounder it hits the deck for them and they're looking at me like hey you want to get a picture of this i'm like no i don't want a picture of that little thing we want 200s and 300s and shots at 400 pound fish and so you know it's it's uh you know i, I hate to say it you know but they literally those those hundred you know they literally you know, those, those hundred pounders are just straight out of the womb. They come out of, out of the womb, they're at a hundred pounds. It seems like there's like nothing smaller than a hundred pounds most of the time. And every season's different, you know, as you know it. And, uh, you know, it's hard to predict what you're going to get or what you're going to see, but, you know, by average, I would say 130 to 300 pound fish are kind of the norm, you know, for Puerto Vallarta and, and the travel run, from the dock to the grounds or anywhere from 50 to 100 miles. So it's very close, very easy to get to, you know, and it's very comfortable. Very cool, very cool. Well, let's, uh, let's kind of talk about, I'm kind of curious, the difference between catching a big bluefin versus catching a big yellowfin. I've heard it's an incredible difference. Well, what do you think about that? Oh yeah, yeah, these, I, I hate to say it, I don't want to burst anybody's bubble, but catching a bluefin compared to a yellowfin it's like night and day those bluefin don't pull nearly as hard it's very easy to land these bluefin um you know i've you know compared to that kind of yeah the yellowfin a bluefin catching a 200 pound bluefin or I let's call this a 100 pound bluefin is like pulling on a 150 or 100 i'm sorry 100 pound yellowfin is like catching like 150 or 180 pound bluefin let's put it that way it's that much of a difference. I don't want to say it's twice as easy or twice as hard, whatever you want to look at it, but definitely a yellow thing will, will definitely kick your ass. That's for sure. Nice. And I'm sure you've probably seen that too on the boat quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. And they act totally different. You know, those yellow fin, they literally pull all the way to the very last moment till you sink a gaff in it versus, and that's and also too, yellow fin caught in different areas totally act different too. Like yellow fin at, you know, on the banks or at, you know, at, you know, Clarion or somewhere else act totally different from, you know, fish that you catch on the ridge or, you know, near islands. These fish are like literally like home guard fish. They pull hard. They live their whole life getting chased by sharks and trying to get eaten the whole time, you know, by orcas or, you know, you know, all sorts of stuff. And so these fish are pretty, pretty, pretty gnarly and they're feeding on incredible stuff. Squid primarily is their big main diet is squid. And so they're full of energy and uh, they, you know, especially if you, you know, hook them in a shallow area, they're incredible. They pull so hard and uh, it's, a, it's a whole different deal. Nice, nice. Well, let's go back to some questions here. 
Uh, David wants to know what kind of jigs do you currently recommend for, uh, for your San Diego trips right now? You know, um, there's all sorts of jigs, you know, there's a various, you know, the Thora of jigs that are out there. And I, and I think that a lot of them will get bit. I think the primary thing, and we'll talk about the brands and all that, but you know, the, the big thing is having the proper hooks on them, you know, is the big thing, you know, you can have, you know, the best jig in the world, but if you don't have the proper rigging, um, that is key. And I see it nine to 10 times guys show up to the boat, they're ready to leave the dock. And, I, and they're like, hey, Kevin, can you tie this on for me? I'm like, sure, I got time. We're not leaving yet, we're still getting permits. And I'll look and go, shoot, you know what? Let's take these hooks off. Let's get the upgraded hooks on them. And they look at me and like, I didn't get any. And I'm like, oh, the last thing I want to do is send them up to the tackle shop five minutes before we got to leave the dock. And that happens all the time. Um, you know, we, we've been fishing these new jigs by Fish Lab. Uh, we've been testing them out. And I'm not one of those guys that say, oh, they just gave me a bunch of jigs because I buy, my, I buy my own jigs. I don't, you know, they don't, you know, they'll give us a few samples, but, you know, when we find a jig that we like, we buy them and uh, we like them and we use them. And uh, uh, Fish Lab is uh, produced by Akuma. Um, they have this, uh, this new uh, flutter jig. Um, it's kind of similar to like a Colt Sniper. And uh, uh, really this new flutter jig and this 80 and 120 gram jig. And it comes perfect right out of the package. It's got a 2X treble hook that you don't have to change on it. You get in the water, uh, you drop them down and 50, 80, 100, 150 feet and just grind them in. And, uh, you know, they've been working really good. Those have been super deadly and it doesn't matter what color you're using. They're all working perfect. And the key is on those, those jigs, those flutter jigs is, you know, fishing with 50 or 60 pound, it works very well compared to like putting a hundred or 150 pound leader. They don't, don't seem to get bit at all. Or if they do, it has to be in low light conditions or in the dark. And then, um, you know, they, uh, Fish Lab also has another jig that is very similar to like a flat fall. But the unique thing about these jigs, especially on their 250 and 300 gram jigs, they have a 7691 big J hook on the bottom and two big assist hooks. I mean, they're pre-rigged. They, they put so much thought, you know, well beyond everything. They knew they designed it for San Diego fish and bluefin. I mean, they pinpointed it right for it. They created it and uh, they nailed it. And as of late, that big 250 and 300 has been working good, especially like in windy conditions, if you know it's gonna be windy out and you know that you can't have a hard time getting down two or 300 or few 400 feet down because you get so much scope out there, that heavy, you know, 300 gram has been, been awesome. Um, but day in, day out, everyday use, that 100 and I think it was 160 gram that they have, they call it a, slow pitch jig i believe it is what it's called and that jig has been been super deadly for us and and we've we've been having huge success with it um it's new to the stores talk to your taco shop and maybe you can find it but any color works great nice nice speaking of uh, fish lab mr davy brown's checking in hi dave how's it going he yeah. actually dropped a, dropped a link down below fishlabtackle.com for uh, for all those jigs there Oh, cool. Awesome. Yep. Yep. And as a reminder, guys, if you have any questions at all for Captain Keith, just drop them down in the comments below. We'd love to answer those. Um, so Keith, let, let's kind of go back. Um, I'm kind of curious, how, how did you end up getting started in, in the sport fishing world? And, and uh, what led you to today, owner of two, you know, not only one, but two great operations? Pretty crazy. Um, literally started off at the age of 12. I was working at Port Winery Sport Fishing in Channel Islands Harbor. Uh, worked for a, a good old friend and captain, uh, Bob Levy. Um, had a boat called the LEM and uh, ran basically the 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. trip and worked, worked my way up. You know, worked from all several different boats um, throughout the years. And right when I was, I was primarily working on sport boats. And when I was 18, um, I went to go get my captain's license um, and started running yachts. Started a family, I couldn't be away nearly as much and kind of pretty much uh, stuck at home base, running private yachts, um, you know, anywhere from Point Conception down to Cabo San Lucas in Puerto Vallarta. Uh, spent my whole life uh, uh, doing all sorts of stuff. You know, I've got a line class record of a California halibut, also have a line class record of a Calico bass. Um, you know, ran yachts from 
40 to 72 foot uh, all my life, literally spent 200 days a year, two to 300 days a year um, for the last 32 years and uh, spent my whole life on the water. And, uh, you know, pretty much running on a yacht scene. I, we bought my wife and I, you know, I met my wife, Nicole, when she was 15, I was 16. Haven't been apart since. We're kind of pretty much want to say we're a fishing family, a fishing business. Um, you know, we, we live our whole life of fishing. It's the phone rings on her phone rings from the moment she wakes up in the morning till she's completely exhausted at night, just answering crazy questions, but that's her life. You know, ask her anything. She knows everything. She's caught yelping over 300 pounds and bluefin tuna over a thousand. She's done all sorts of neat stuff. We kind of did a little adventure, but over the years we have purchased and owned three sport boats um, and uh, bought our first home with uh, Marlin tournament winnings at Catalina Island, won the Catalina Classic. Um, and uh, we bought our first home with Marlin tournament winnings. It was pretty awesome. And uh, so, yeah, we've had a, a crazy life. It's been never a dull moment. Every day and every minute of our life, it's just like the moment the phone rings, it's like, oh man, what's next? But, uh, it's crazy. I wouldn't change it for anything. We love it. Um, we've done all sorts of stuff by you know, our next thing, you know, we're, we're starting this Mag Bay thing, but, you know, we're, we're opening some cool stuff in Texas too, which is, you know, I can't, I can't stop doing stuff. And so I love it. You know, I love it. I eat it up and you'll definitely, uh, you'll hear some stuff, you know, in the near future about some really neat stuff out in Texas for sure. That's awesome. And it certainly runs in your family with, uh, with your son on the Poseidon too. It's crazy. I never thought in a million years, I, you know, just how he just took it to the next level. You know, he just, the things that he does and, and uh, you know, his, his way of getting the information out to the people and, and his draw, he has his people. And it's funny because, you know, he called me up the other day. He's like, yeah, can you, can you run the boat for a couple trips? I would like a day off next month. And I'm like, sure, of course. I'm like, I'll, I'll give you a couple trips off. I'll do this and that. And, 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 and I'll step on the boat and run trips. And, and the pastor's are like, who are you? You know, well, we want Hunter on board. And I'm like, shit, man, I'm nobody. I know that, but let's go fishing. And by the time the trip's over, they're like, shit, we had a pretty good time. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> wonder where that came from. But yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty cool to have, you know, to be in it so long that you've groomed and, and, and taught your children, taught your children to be able to, do this of what you do and day in day out but not to even think about it he's out there leaving the dock I'm like where's Hunter at and he's like oh he's on a two and a half man I mean the days fly by and uh but it's amazing how it all this you know raising a family among monks your peers and raising kids on the docks and then they turn out to be captains is absolutely crazy yeah it's uh I think that's kind of what they call full circle too yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. Awesome. Totally. Well, uh, Davey Brown's kind of answering some Okuma questions here in the comments, but uh, Jeremy asked, uh, he didn't catch the name of that slow pitch jig. And do you guys ever use traditional slow pitch jigging rods for tuna? You know, that's so, so no, I don't. I don't. And that's a whole different animal. And there's, you know, you, you jigging guys on the East Coast got this stuff down i know the east coast guys and i don't know where you guys are talking calling from or texas i should say east coast i'm going to talk texas too man the midwest man these guys these guys have that slow pitch jig down and uh you know I'm, i come from an old school pl68 <laughs> heavy big jig that's hard to drag through the water beat you up you know they literally drop the jig and and, and fish it till your arm falls off and then literally pick up your arm, put it back on and keep going, you know? And, and uh, that's, you know, big hooks, heavy jigs, down deep, lots of glow. And key is just to keep it in the zone as long as you possibly can and keep turning the handle and uh, don't, don't give up, you know? And, and it's amazing, you can build some pretty good endurance, but you know, those are, those are the slow pitch rods for jigging. That is a whole different thing that, that I would love to learn, but you know, I just being an owner and operator running trips, it's kind of the last thing, but I'm going that direction. Someday I'll learn those rods, but yeah, definitely. <laughs> nice. Jimmy's checking in. He said that he just got two nice big bluefin 
on a 160 gram flat full on the constitution last week. Last uh-huh. week. Sweet. And uh, so Jimmy, Jimmy got a couple fish right on, on a 160. Awesome. That's, that's exactly what we're using. And ask him what, what, what kind of leader we're using, Jimmy. Share with us. For sure. Wayne wants to know what size Makaira reel for the big bluefin tuna and what, uh, what pound braid would you put on? So, so on the Makaira's, you know, we, we kind of use a little bit of everything. So um, I really like that Makaira 16, 30, and the 50, okay? And that's for primary use as a passenger stepping on a boat. What am I going to need? If you're a private boater that needs an additional reel, which you always do, that 50 wide is, is the answer. You know, I like the 80, but I think the 80 is a little bit big and wobbly. Um, holds a lot of line. And I think the 50 wide gets the job done, even with the biggest yellowfin in Puerto Vallarta and the biggest bluefin, you know, that we'll have here in San Diego. Um, but that 16, that Makara 16, we fill it with 80 pound braid. The, uh, the 30, we'll put a hundred pound braid. And on the, on the 50, we put 130. And we sometimes will squeeze 150. You can get 150 on it, but 130 gets the job done. Hollow braid. That cyclone, um, that soft steel cyclone hollow braid. And that's another thing too. A lot of people out there are like, hey, you know, so what kind of braid should I use? You know, I like the hollow. Well, why do you like the hollow? Man? It, the assumption of hollow always has been that the hollow takes up more space on the reel. That's the first thing everybody says is, oh, I don't want to go hollow because I want to get as many yards as I can on my reel. But that hollow actually is thinner in diameter. You can put more yards on your reel with hollow braid. And so if you're looking for more yardage and good braking strength and good overall, something that you want to use, go with hollow. And that hollow cyclone from soft steel definitely works really good for us. That's actually a really good point there. Yeah, for sure. Jimmy checked back on in. It was straight 50 pound mono. First one was on the up and the second one was on the down. Awesome. <laughs> Well, thanks for fishing and support, Jimmy. We appreciate it, man. It's uh, it's all you guys, man, that make it happen for us. And and without you guys, we're we're, we're not going anywhere. For sure, for sure. David's checking in. He says, "Thank you, sir. I'm trying to get my gear ready for the two day trip next month with you. I'm guessing that's a Okuma sponsored trip." On the uh, Constitution. On the Constitution, yeah. It sounds like Dave. Uh, Dave's gonna be sponsoring a trip for me here. <laughs> we had a little conversation this morning about that, but uh, um, but uh, yeah, well, uh, yeah, I, I I'd like to know what Akuma trip that is, but we'll, uh, we'll we'll have to check it out. So definitely, awesome. Thank you. For sure. Speaking of Dave, he says if anyone is wondering, the Makara 62 holds 600 yards of a hundred pound hollow core with a 50 foot wind on Woo, that's a ton of line <laughs> no kidding <laughs> <laughs> jimmer uh jimmy also said hunter is awesome as well my son got his first one last season with him oh awesome how old is his son jimmy if you want to answer that how old is yeah. your son awesome well let's let's kind of go back to the makara series uh the makaras are always great reels and all that when you let, let's let's start with the 16 mm-hmm. in terms of the makara 16 what kind of fish class are you are you thinking about uh or what would that be good for in terms of uh of what kind of fish you're you're fishing for you know that 16 honestly it's a great reel it's a for that slow pitch jig that 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 jig that you want to use that that flat fall style but that fish left slow pitch 160 gram up to you know 200, 250 gram. That's a great rod and reel setup. Um, I like fishing that with 80 pound. Um, it works great during the day, you know, with 50 or 60 pound leader on there. But the great thing about that is it's also a perfect reel for putting a, a rubber band on it with like a 10 ounce torpedo. Um, you know, we, we, uh, we'll, we work, we all boats and we teach our passengers. We work a lot in fathoms. And so we'll set up a, um, you know, when we tell we do a little salmon on the boat, we'll say, hey guys, all right, we're gonna, you know, this is how we do it. A rod length is pretty much a fountain, six feet. And we'll set up, you know, before even the, the braid even gets wet, you know, we have a black marker on the boat and say, okay guys, ideally would be is get your rod set up at 25, 30 and 35 fathoms. And throughout the whole trip, you'll hear, okay guys, there's fish at 30. 
And there's a lot of times you're fishing and you'll have a little mark. You have one mark at 25, two marks at 30, and two marks or three marks at 35. And we do the same thing in Puerto Vallarta, same we're all around, wherever you go fishing. This is the same depth, same everything, same style. You know, we'll use a 10 ounce torpedo or 12 or 16 or whatever, you know, six or eight feet up the line, a nice sardine, nose hook. We'll get away on a rubber band sinker with a little bit larger hook and we'll slowly let it down, mark it down at 25 fathoms. And some guys are fishing at 25, 30, 35. And as soon as somebody gets bit, hangs one on a rubber band, hey, what depth were you? And I was at 30. Hey guys, we're all at 30. Guys will start dropping down to 30. Oh, they're on mark, boom, there's another one, another one, another one. So it definitely helps to mark your gear in, in that, that Makaira 16 with that 80 pound with the rubber band sinker is super deadly, especially when you're, you're targeting that fish up to 100 pounds, it's perfect. And you'll, you can land that 150 pound fish on that rig, absolutely. But that's kind of the reel that's designed for that style there. Nice, nice. And you kind of brought up a good point where as long, you know, especially with these big bluefin here in San Diego, you kind of want, in my opinion, you kind of want to have guys try different things to kind of see what the key is for that day or for that time. And uh, do, do you kind of see that the same way? We do. It's like a team effort. I tell the guys, we don't even do jackpots on our boats. We never have, never will. It's all about sharing the stoke. You know, we, we do uh, kite rotations differently than anyone. Typically, we'll put all the, the women and children first on the kite. That's, uh, that's why you see a lot of women come fishing with us all the time. You see these pictures on Instagram or Facebook. And, oh, there's another girl with a 180 pounder or something like that. 200, 300, 370, whatever. And, and uh, so there's a lot of women. We, you know, we, we, we cater to the families. We're all about if you are, say, number two and, you know, you hang a, you hang a fish in the dark on a jig and, and you got a fish on the boat, 100, 150 pounder, let's say, and, and we start going down the list on kite rotations. And if you're, hey, we usually say, hey, well, let's skip you and move on to the next guy. And the key is let's get everybody on a fish on, you know, get everybody a fish first. And then for the ones that haven't had an opportunity on the kite, we catch them back right back up. We start back at number two and pick up number two and number seven and number 11 having, you know, had an opportunity on the kite. So, you know, yeah, we definitely do that. We, we share a lot of that information. We talk amongst each other because they all know the more fish we hook, the more fish we catch, the quicker opportunity and a better opportunity they have on that flying fish on the kite when it comes, comes around. Nice, nice. Jimmy's checking back in. He said his son was 18. He got uh, 80 pound blue at 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> That's good. He's stoked. That's awesome. Get him, keep, keep bringing them back. We want them. Yeah. David Chavez is asking, are you tossing live bait or chunks to bring the fish up or in closer? Uh, we're, we're, we're chumming primarily live sardines. Um, we don't, we chunk a little bit on in different situations, but um, Currently, you know, in San Diego, our style is, is live, live sardines. Uh, when we go down to Mag Bay, it's sardines and mackerel live or chunk. Um, or we chunk squid. Squid works really good, you know, chunk or that. Or go down to PV, it's, you know, we're chunking skipjack or, you know, um, you, know uh, you know, pretty much dead cabby sometimes. But yeah, the chunk absolutely works without a doubt. But primarily, it's live sardine that gets bit. Nice, nice. Ryan's checking in. He says he loves this captain. His son, Hunter, and Captain Chase are beasts. So that's good. Awesome, yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> After the same thing. Yeah. Bert says he's fishing on the day and a half trip, August 2nd through the 4th. Okay, cool. Awesome. Yeah. Ryan also says my personal best on the boat, 350 yellowfin fly line. and a 350 pound yellowfin on the fly line. Yeah. And a 220 pound bluefin on the fly line. Holy shit. I have a feeling that's Ryan Evans. I have a weird feeling. Yep. That's right. <laughs> What's up, Ryan? <laughs> yeah, he has it. That's the honest truth. Yeah. He's, he's smart. And he's, and that there's a perfect example of a guy, a great sportsman. He goes out and brings all of his friends out fishing. And, and I kid you not nine times out of 10, I will see him, I'll look up towards the bow, he's fishing, and he already knows the game. He knows how to catch these things. These are all my Bakersfield boys, and they come down, and they're killers, of course. And uh, he always, I'm always looking up there, and he's 
hook and fish. And then I look back and I don't see him holding the rod anymore. I'm thinking, oh my God, he lost the fish. No, he hands it off. Hands it off to somebody he knows or that he wants to stoke out and he's notorious. And that's why he's got a 350 pound yellow fin underneath his belt. So pretty awesome. That's unreal, unreal. Yeah. Um, Bradley wants to know, is PV gonna happen this year? That's uh, yes, it is gonna happen. And it's gonna be on a limited basis only. You know, as, as everything is just, you know, uncertainty, you know, we had a, <clears throat> this season, we had a lot of guys and probably, uh, I think I know Bradley is. And uh, a lot of our guys have shifted from Puerto Vallarta and wanted to change it up a year. And they, uh, you know, quite, quite a few of our groups jumped in the Mag Bay scene. And during that whole transition, COVID happened. And it's like, we haven't really been pushing anything. And, you know, our primary thing is our people. They're, you know, trying to figure things out. Things are happening. Things are on a positive note. I feel that we're all, we're all going in the right direction. You know, there's definitely uh, a lot of our people really, really, really are anxious to go fishing. And they're super excited. And it's just giving it time to marinate a little bit. And, and we've noticed a huge shift in the last two weeks and a lot of our people are are starting to call like i want to go on this trip i want to sign up and and it's like i look at nicole it's time to go so monday is our big day uh, it's a lot of push for puerto Vallarta, a big push for mag bay and yes we are going to both places the poseidon will be fishing in in uh, mag bay for the month and then going back to san diego um and then the constitution will fish along side by side with the Poseidon and we will be going December 1st, going to Port of Florida. And we will be there December. And it looks like all the way through January at this moment right now. And now we're starting to work into parts of, we have a little holes in, in December. We have a little bit of holes in January and now we're starting to go into February. So yeah, we're there. Nice, nice. Well, we have a couple more minutes left. Do you have any plans on uh, coming back to San Diego and taking advantage of uh, these big bluefin off our coast anytime soon? You talking to me? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm going. I'm coming down. I'm, you know, we've been we've been uh, buying. We're in the process of buying bass boats and doing all kinds of stuff right now, getting ready for our people to come in the spring. And uh, so we're we're offering all kinds of weird, crazy stuff. We're going. We're doing a uh, bass fishing stripe large large mouth stripe bass. We're doing um, a lot of our guys want to go fit, surf that wave in Waco, Texas. Um, uh, some guys want to go hog hunt out of helicopters and stuff. So there's all kinds of cool stuff that we're just lining everything up and just making it happen. But yes, uh, it looks like I'm flying in on the 18th of, uh, of, uh, August and I'll be running a couple trips for Hunter. So he can go play around. And then, uh, and then I believe on the 23rd, I'm stepping on the constitution till the end of the month. So I'll be in and out and then, uh, doing those trips and then continue working through September. I will be on every trip in, in uh, towards the end of the season, just giving our guys, my boys, they're young, they're energetic and giving them an opportunity to, to work as much as they possibly can. Um, you know, obviously we were crossing our fingers. We're going to get through this whole season and keep it going. But, you know, our, our, my biggest thing is putting the money in our, our, our employees pockets and keeping them going and keeping them running and, and, you know, filling in whatever we need, but I'm, I'm on my way, but I will be there in the end of the season and definitely be on every trip in, in, uh, you know, Mag Bay, um, jumping from boat to boat and be on every trip. And then I also will be in all in Puerto Vallarta too, every trip as usual. Awesome. I'll get my 150 days this year, maybe two, I don't know, 200, but pretty close. Nice. Nice. Well, for those of us who kind of want to get on the Poseidon or the Constitution, how do we get a hold of you and uh, how do we get on? Super easy. Um, one way, you know, anytime during the day, you can jump on our, our websites, uh, constitutionsportfishing.com, which a buddy of mine, Terrence from 976, is tearing up the website and making it super high tech now. Uh, so he's, he's all over it now. Um, yeah, and you can go there or you can go either on the Poseidon sportfishing.net or you can go at any time hmlanding.com and you can check our boats out or schedule what's happening and jump on an open party trip and book it right then and there. But as always, um, I would say 50% uh, of our customers, they call Nicole and they check in with her and they always check in no matter if it's during the season or off the season, not to say hello. And, and uh, she's a very easy person to talk to. Uh, been in the business her whole life since she was 15 years old. And uh, so she's a good person to talk to if you, 
And a lot of nine times out of 10, I'm, I'm nearby and you can probably catch me if you have a, 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 a crazy question that she may not be able to answer. We can get that answered for you, but charters and her, her number um, is 866-903-7742. And you can go on her Facebook uh, or Instagram, Cal, uh, Constitution Sport Fishing, um, or you can go on Instagram at Poseidon Sport Fishing too. So and you can reach us. So when Hunter's at the dock, he makes his reports. And then when he's out to sea, I'll kind of jump in and throw in reports, but kind of kind of back and forth and kind of throwing off each other. Awesome. Awesome. And same with those mag bait trips. We just uh, give Nicole a call there. Give Nicole a call and you're going to start seeing it. You'll get a lot more information on Monday. You'll start seeing a lot, a lot of talk going on and flying around and, you know, don't, don't be afraid. Give us a call. You know, we're not, never been too, too big to answer any of the smallest question that you guys might have or who we need to talk to about this or that. Cause half the time I get turned into talking about fishing rods or something like that. It's like, and we're happy you know, to, to share that information with you. Awesome, Keith. Well, I can't thank you enough, man, for stepping on here and uh, being with us today. No, I appreciate having you on board. It was, it was actually really a lot of fun. So thank you for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we'll uh, we're going to be looking forward to those Mag Bay trips and uh, the rest of the year. I hope the Constitution and the Poseidon have a fantastic summer and uh, catch a lot of fish, man. I appreciate that. Thank you. Have a good one. Absolutely. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Yep. Thank you guys so much for watching, tuning in. We'll be back next week. And uh, thanks a lot, Keith. We'll take, uh, we'll see you soon. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. All right. Take care. Take care.